It's time for Branding Business, the only show that brings branding experts and corporate executives together to explore how branding your business can improve both your top-line growth and bottom-line performance. Brought to you by Rikus Baird. And now, here's your host. Right. Well, welcome to Branding Business. I am Ray Baird, and I'm co-founder of uh, Rikus Baird. And today... We're going to talk about branding nonprofits. Uh, we're going to cover pretty much, you know, probably from a brand standpoint, the five most critical components and how we bring those together to, to build a successful brand. So if you work for a nonprofit or you sit on a board or you have an interest in understanding how to brand nonprofits, I'm, I'm sure you're going to, uh, to see this as, a, as some interest. And uh, with us today to kind of help us with the overall discussion, we've got Dan McQuaid, and Dan is the uh, the CEO of uh, 1OC, and you're going to get to know him a little bit more here. And 1OC was formerly, you know, known as the Volunteer Center of Orange County. And Dan has been involved with, you know, with building nonprofits for probably about maybe 25 years or so. So welcome, Dan. Good morning. Now, I wanted uh, Dan to join um, specifically, because there's a hook here, is that we were fortunate enough to work with Dan, and at the time, it was the Volunteer Center of Orange County, uh, and took him through, and his uh, organization, through a rebranding exercise. So I thought it'd be really important for him to, to be here so that we could all kind of learn about from the brand uh, company and from actually from the overall client in this end. So we prepared some different questions, but before we get into it, Dan, first... Can you briefly explain what the Volunteer Center of Orange County was and move in a little bit of the, why did you feel the need that you needed to rebrand? Well, thanks for having me to start off with, but uh, the problem really was is that I couldn't explain when we started our relationship working with Rikers Baird what the Volunteer Center was. And uh, without uh, the assistance, I was left going on and on and on about a, a full array of services that by the end of my conversation, typically when people ask, so what does the Volunteer Center do, I had them completely fuzzballed. Right. So our real challenge was being able to succinctly be able to say, what was our, our, our business, what was our purpose, what was the benefit to our customers? And the reason for that was is that uh, Volunteer Center Orange County had grown over 50 years into a vibrant volunteer center, but in the last few years had added additional services professional training, consulting, and business services. And I found myself repeatedly saying, we're a volunteer center, but we're also, and right. I would take it off from there, and people would start looking cross-eyed at me. Right. Well, I remember a lot of the discussions that we had, um, and when I got to know you at, you know, in the beginning, we'd say, well, we're not really a volunteer center. We've kind of become something else. Buts aren't a good way to have conversations when you're saying we're the volunteer center, but. Right. So tell us a, a little bit, you know, one of the other uh, reasons, and, I, and I'm sure if you're nonprofits out there, one of the other reasons that a lot of nonprofits kind of uh, think about, you know, rebranding is because they think that they need a new logo or they need, you know, you know or different colors. Uh, you and I had a lot of strategic, it was more of a strategic discussion about the business, and we educated a lot of people, you know, what the brand was kind of about. But talk to me a little bit about, you know, the reason and how you were able to talk to even the board about why we need to do this because a lot of people out there you know there's boards so maybe talk about that a little bit right well let, let me start off by saying I think the rebanding effort really helped us to be able to have an identity and be able to describe what we aspire to be and what we wanted to be known as so it was part of that transformation of the organization that at its basis motivated us to look for a rebranding effort so that we could better tell our story our brand is a tool. It's how we engage the community. We needed to be able to do that differently because we weren't what we used to be. Right. And the what we did actually is had a, a series of meetings with community leaders. And I remember uh, Bob Haskell from Pacific Life in response to a presentation we made uh, early when uh, this is going back five years ago when we were starting this process of is evolving as an organization. Bob said, you need to change your name. Uh, because we spent 25% of our time talking about volunteering, and the rest was all the other services that we were introducing into the market that a lot of people weren't aware of. 
we also had an advisory council of community leaders that were specifically brought in, and they also said, we're lost. Uh, someone said, what are you doing charging fees? Uh, I thought you were a volunteer organization. And to know that we were a professional service organization, a nonprofit resource center, our name confused people right off the bat. Yeah. I think I think you use the word a, a lot of times when people come to us for re- rebranding. It's well, we've we've become something different. We're confused out, or we're confusing the marketplace, or you know, merger and acquisition would happens right. a lot. And some nonprofits, you know, join with other nonprofits and find themselves saying, "All right, what are we now?" That's right. So I want to talk to you know because in the early stages when we got together, one thing that um, when we first sat down, I remember saying, you know, branding there's a there's a process and. We took a look at, you know, taking you through how do you really build an overall brand? And I remember having the conversations around this isn't about a logo. This isn't about, you know, color. This isn't about image. Those are all really important things. But it really comes down to, you know, stepping back and to taking your strategy and from your strategy standpoint is, is aligning it with the overall brand. And one of the other things in that overall kind of process was to try to teach your organization and also the board about what you were going to do. And I know we had a lot of meetings. You had the board in. You helped kind of have them understand why, as we just talked about. Talk a little bit about now about how that process worked and how you got the board to kind of think about it. Because getting their buy-in, I thought, was really, you know, really important in the beginning. Let me start by noting that uh, we had grown our board of directors that included a number of uh, corporate executives and leaders, people that had grown their own businesses. And I think they appreciated the value of a strong brand. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something they wanted for our organization and saw the need for it. So in some ways, I was actually talking a little bit to the choir uh, because they recognized they couldn't explain what we were doing and our name wasn't clear. And therefore, they needed that clear corporate identity if we were actually going to be successful. They saw that because it's good business. Yeah. The thing that I thought that was uh, really critical in our working relationship with Rekas Barrett was that we didn't go out guessing. Uh, there was uh, internal surveys that were done in interviews and external surveys and interviews. And it gave us the advantage of having everybody internally feel like well, I'm contributing information that's going to help uh, inform the decision. And it was about our identity and selection of a name and a tag and, and other things it was downstream. First, we had to have a clear sense of how do we see ourselves, how do other people see us, and then strategically, how do we want to be seen, and how does that fit our future direction as well. In that way, We got incredible information, I think, internally and externally. And I'll share with you, I thought it was fascinating that you could do a comparison with how do we see ourselves, but how do other people see us? And sometimes the disconnects are really good. I think people saw us as a a strong volunteer network. People saw us as knowledgeable about uh, Orange County. But externally, people might not be as aware of our integrated services that we have internally, that's what we thought was really strong. So it was. It was. It only led us to think we got to make some changes here in how we communicate and how we identify ourselves with other folks. Right. Right. Well, yeah. One of the things that we find as 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 a branding firm, if you don't get people's early buy into the process, and you just kind of spring on them at a particular time, hey, this is what our brand is, and this is what it's going to stand for, is that you know they're not involved in that overall process. Now you have a lot of different you know stakeholders right. throughout the process. So. So on the board, I remember from the beginning, you sold in, here's why we need to, um, to do this. Secondly is here's the group we're going to use, and we educated them to the process. We then did a lot of the interviews, you know, back and forth, and that's where I think kind of the magic happened to where those gaps were about what you're known for today and what you could be known for in the future, right. which kind of leads me to the next question. In branding, uh, we believe, you know, one of the most important things, obviously, is the brand position. You know that's kind of the holy grail. What what do you want to be? What do you want to be known for? And in many cases, it's not just you know trying to find you know a, a, the the secret kind of brand. It's really understanding from a strategic standpoint what you are. And what was interesting through this process, we were able to kind of drill down and say, okay, where do you really want to focus? Which we decided on Orange County. Secondly, who do you want to focus on, and how do you? Um, 
and how will all of the other kind of ecosystem work together? I know there was a lot of tough kind of discussions around that, but maybe talk about how you thought about those strategic considerations and how we kind of found that and, and maybe jump in then and talk about how did we come up with that compelling truth. And, and I think it is useful whether you're a large corporation or a nonprofit organization, uh, mid-sized, large, or even small, I think it is helpful to have an external process and uh, guide in that that journey because uh, you're too close to it. At least I found myself too close to it at times to be able to be really objective. Or more often than not, I knew it. I just needed someone to pull it out right. because when it fits and it's right and when we got to our destination, it was, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But you oftentimes need to work your way through it. So the, in our search for uh, who are we and what is our purpose and uh, what differentiates us from other people that are in our similar businesses, it, it became very clear. I, for a long time, talked about organization as a little bit of a two-wheel bicycle. I remember sharing that an analogy with you that what front wheel was volunteering and the back wheel was our nonprofit resource services, the training and the consulting, and we added business services later. But it's hard to explain a bicycle because it's not unified. And we also had audiences that were funders, there were nonprofits, there were individual volunteers, and there were corporations. And we had to find something, a way of being able to define it in a unified way that made sense on a high level so everybody could identify, well, that's 1OC. Otherwise, we were having messages that got confusing because we were saying different things to different folks without that high-level messaging. Yeah, I think one of the things that the, the, the nonprofits, other ones that are listening in, can learn from what you're talking about right now is you can't be everything to everyone. everybody. We've got to be known for something. Right, and those are the conversations that we had. Yeah. And so two things happen through the discovery process and talking. One is, where are we going to focus? Mm -hmm. And by focusing on Orange County, that really made kind of a specialization. The second part is what we were just talking about. Is who do we want to focus on? I remember having a lot of hard conversations. Who is the customer at the very top? Yeah. Because trying to build a brand for, you know, for everyone, you have to really look at the ecosystem and find. And you found a real simple overall market yes. that you had already serving yes. and just kind of address it. So talk a little bit about how we how we did that. I think the the issue for us is were we a bicycle with a nonprofit resource center which says our services go to the nonprofits or are we a volunteer center where it goes to individuals and corporations and other things. Or we say when it really comes down to it, our purpose is to um, impact the nonprofits themselves and we may partner with corporations with funders and other folks but the end impact of our efforts was really stronger nonprofits in Orange County and if we did that everybody sort of had a win and a, 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 had a piece in the game yeah. and that to me that defining moment because I remember we were sitting in the same conference room is we decided to focus specifically on that was the breakthrough that was a strategy decision yeah. and a breakthrough to really focus on that and then it made it really easy to come up with the taglines to come up with the messaging and and if you would kindly you know the the line that we came up with actually was from one of your board members said something, somebody else said another thing, and we landed on the tagline of... Well, our, our tagline is accelerating nonprofit success. We had previously had a mission statement that said the Volunteer Center strengthened our communities by providing, uh, by mobilizing volunteer action and accelerating nonprofit success. It was the bicycle. Right. We said, well, don't volunteers really accelerate nonprofit success? Isn't now more than ever we're going to have to utilize volunteers to help nonprofits be able to strengthen our communities? So we just changed the pieces a little bit in its order and then underlined the section that said accelerating nonprofit success. And then the real value in finding that, that essential element there was, well, we do that by mobilizing volunteers, by providing professional training, by having consulting services and business services. All four of our business lines line up really yeah. nicely with accelerating nonprofit yeah. success. And it's, it's always nice when it happens like that. A line that. that's good. Yeah, it always, it always is. And, it, and it's, it's tough, isn't it? I mean, it, you really yeah. 
painstakingly have been thought of, thinking about this, you know, for, for many different years. Right. But, you know, when you, when you had the outside group and you had the inside groups kind of working, there was just kind of the magic that, you know, that happened during that time. One of the other things that, that might be kind of interesting is, is to talk about, you know, the name I- itself. Yes. From, uh, you know, into the naming process. And maybe talk a little bit about, you know, how he landed on, you know, on one OC. I, I don't think I've shared this story very often, so we'll tell it here. I, I like the Center for Nonprofit Excellence because that's aspirational for me, both for our, our, our role and for the community. But there's other non- centers for nonprofit excellence. As there, we found. As we found. And that was one of the things that uh, you did is you went and searched a lot in terms of the different options that we had. At one point, we had sent, someone said, well, we could call it the Center for Organizational Nonprofit Excellence. And someone said, well, that's, that's way too many words. What's the acronym for that? And it came out to be, well, we could be known as one, well, one, and, and Orange County came into it because it would be the Center for Nonprofit Excellence of Orange County. Well, someone said, that's one, that's one OC. You know, we really want to have... We're just one part of a larger or a nonprofit sector in Orange County. But we liked that, that notion and we aspire to be able to create a sense of oneness that everyone is invested in creating a healthy and strong, vibrant Orange County. Uh, it became ap- aspirational. It also encompassed the notion that we're one organization with a, a suite of integrated services. Mm-hmm. And I don't think I've shared the story since we went through that brainstorming. But I think the key piece is that in working with you, we came up with a creative place where we could brainstorm ideas and things sometimes happen creatively when you're given the freedom and the looseness of being able to just say, there's no right or wrong answer in this piece. What what comes up? And sometimes it comes from left field. And I think we really like that name because it's what we aspire to see our community and it's also how we'd like to be seen yeah and what what made it a lot easier to come up with a name and come up with that overall tagline is because the strategy you picked yes. a great purpose picked an audience that you wanted to focus mm-hmm. on and from a strategic standpoint then that really hones it down for the creative and then just having fun together. I mean, we, you know, there was a lot of sessions that we had. We had uh, many different people come from many different walks of, of your different lives and this team that we had. And one of the other things is to form an overall team, right. cross-functional. Maybe tell the nonprofits of, of how you did that and what that team looked like because that's really important. You can't have too many people. You've got to have good business thinkers, great creative right. people. Our board was aware that we were retaining you as a, as a firm. And they were incredibly supportive of it. But they also realized uh, we have 25 board members. We're not exactly going to have a, a, a creative work process with 25 folks. So we did pull in some board members, actually used some community volunteers that right. were uh, in the uh, business sector that could help us in, in marketing, and used uh, some of my leadership staff to be forming a team. And that way we were able to move faster but also go into more detail. Uh, I think the key, though, uh, Ray, was the reporting back that took place at various stages. We didn't come in with this complete package that said, this is our name, this is our statement, and this is uh, what we did is we shared for first the, the community results of the surveying, both internal and external. At each stage, we said, and this is what we've come up with in terms of our brand position. Right. And then we came up with the name that made sense on it. So, in essence, what you did is you... We went through a process of building our brand. Yeah, and building trust and in, building in the trust thinking. There's nothing better for, for the nonprofits that are out there that are considering, you know, building an overall brand is to go back to your board. Let them know what the customer, what their customers think at the time. Let them know what the employees think at the time. Study the overall competition. One big, really big point, especially for nonprofits, because in Orange County, Dan, how many nonprofits are in Orange County? Oh, let's say 7,000. 7,000. So in those 7,000 nonprofits, they really own a lot of different things. So you have to understand the space that you're in. Once you understand the space that you're in, studying that competition, because when you study the competition, you're going to find that a lot of people are doing the same thing and trying to go after the same space. So as we took the board through all of those different kind of milestones, they were really kind of excited at the end when we finally introduced the idea of 10C and uh, accelerating nonprofit success. I remember that day because 
when we said, well, after we presented, it was, well, what do you think? And the smiles, the, the, the cheering, everybody was ecstatic about it. But that didn't happen by accident. And, and I think what, the wisdom of what, what you brought to that process as well is how we, how we position it, but how we express our, our brand. This is absent. It may go a little bit into one of the development of the trademark and the tagline that went along with it. But there was the notion that we needed to ensure that we linked the two. Having an aspirational name to some respect that's not descriptive, 1OC, it was really important that we link Accelerate Nonprofit Success Which is to the, the business value the proposition. Best. And that doesn't always happen. I, you know, we've built uh, hundreds of different brands. This is one in one particular case where you have a real positive oral tagline, Accelerate Nonprofit Success, and it is really the value proposition. It's your tagline, and it's kind of what you, know, what you aspire to do. Right. So aligning the vision and the mission of that is, is very important. I want to switch gears just a little bit, um, you know, keep the pace in the, in, with the time. Is one, one big thing that we see with nonprofit is really talking about internal adoption. You know our philosophy. You, you know, I preach this all the time. Brands are built from the inside out. So can you comment on the importance of getting not only the board, but, but getting your people involved in the, in the process, how you communicated that, and how did your employees respond to the ideas and the messaging? How did you monitor that? I think we had a sequence, of, a, a, a series of reveal events. And it was, one, we wanted to uh, make that decision. And, and by the way, uh, we didn't take a vote of all employees, do you want this or not? It actually, the brand and the identity and the name, everything, uh, that was at a corporate level. It was, by, it was by the board. We had some staff participation in terms of the leadership. So it was really important, having gotten their input of how we crafted it, but once we were actually doing the reveal, Wanted to make it fun, uh, right. and I uh, remember we actually had you come out when we did our reveal to the staff to a luncheon and had uh, fortune cookies where we had questions where people would be asked questions. Why did you change your name? Did it, didn't it cost a lot of money? A variety of different questions, and we had the staff actually have to rehearse what was going on, uh, how they might interact with our community because if the staff couldn't identify our brand or understand it, we would be lost because they were going to be the people that had, like our board, we did this with our board as well, they had to be able to interpret it, to explain it, and be excited about it and going forward. Yeah, I thought that was really great the way that everybody was involved in that different miles. It really created a lot of energy and and excitement. The last question that I have is, is, uh, in kind of going through the series, so you have the reason, you really developed an overall purpose, you really got into a good process, you defined it with a, you know, with a wonderful kind of you know, positioning, you internalized it. Now let's talk just a little bit, the last question around brand management. Um, if you don't really manage your brand, somebody's going to manage it for you. And I know you, you guys have done a really excellent job forming that. Give, give the audience a little bit of understanding of what the key things when you're managing the brand that you looked at it from a nonprofit standpoint. Well, I think you coached us on this, and you also provided uh, the tools to be able to do that. It, it is something we recognize that if it's going to have any stickiness, you got to see it and present it in the same way in a consistent fashion. So being able to have the style sheets, being able to have the graphic and expressive components of it, and to have a brand police assigned uh, within our staff so that everybody makes sure that everything is presented in the same fashion and the same look, whether it be in print or on the website or other places, work out. I, I think you also gave us some ideas about what would be sort of the uh, brand identity components of it, expressions of it. And, you know, we want to be professional. We wanted to be fun, savvy. You gave us the elements that we could then go and say, is it consistent with how we want to present our brand? And the staff did a great job of then saying, that's us. That's what we want to, how we want to be seen and known as. And it makes it a lot easier when everybody understands uh, the brand and appreciates the brand. Then they can express it in everything you do. And I think that's the key. A brand isn't a logo. The brand is an expression of how you want to be seen, what your promise is to the community. It, it's a powerful tool, but it's got to be something more than you put on what you put on your letterhead. Yeah, well, that's that is really a uh, that's good stuff, Dan. Um, it was fun building the brand with you. You, uh, you too. Uh, building a you know brand can be complicated, or it can be a lot of fun. And when you find your right stride. 
Uh, you just have to look at you know the fundamentals of doing that. So just as a quick kind of recap, if you're a nonprofit out there, or really for anybody that's building a brand, kind of the first thing you need to do is really define the reason and the purpose. If you don't have that moving forward, you're not going to get buy-in from you know the overall kind of stakeholder. Secondly, is that you really need to, you'd really need to commit to a proven process, whatever that is, in an overall group that that can really help you kind of coach you through that. Because branding is a thing that even for professional marketers, you do or at least rebranding or creating a new one, you do maybe just a couple of times, you know, in your overall kind of career. So really commit to a proven process. It will help you to convince your stakeholders, you know, to, to move forward and make it easier in the process. The third part is probably, you know, the most important for us is don't stop until you really find the compelling truth and can tell a very simple story. Accelerating nonprofit success, I get it. Uh, real simple, but you got to strive to create a, a brand promise that it will immediately connect to your audience. So you got to figure out what that audience is and be very selective. And the last part of that, in terms of positioning, you, if you don't study the competition, you never want to build a brand position that somebody else already owns or somebody that you know you're not going to be able to take. So settle for nothing less than brilliance when you're thinking about your brand positioning. The fourth part, like Dan said, build your brand from the inside out. Your people are your brand, and they'll be uh, you know, communicating that for a long time to come. And the last part is establish a, a brand man, management philosophy, a, a mentality, a, a, an attitude, and a system. Uh, large companies are very complex systems. Smaller ones, you, know, you, you just have to kind of find you know, what works best for your organization. But if you don't manage your brand, somebody's going to manage it for you. And I think if you stick with these, uh, you know, these five major, you know, imperatives, you're going to have a great opportunity to build a, you know, a great nonprofit brand. Uh, and Dan, I'd personally like to thank you for joining the show again, uh, sharing these experiences. I think are really valuable things for for nonprofits. And if you'd like to experience, you know, uh, uh, the One OC brand, it's pretty simple. Go to one one oc dot org. You'll be able to see the manifestation of what Dan has talked about in his strategy and his brand. And if you have any questions about how that was done, you can certainly give us a, a call because we're here to help and to build great brands. Great brands. Great brands. 